Hi guys, how many of you guys love soccer? I know it is a lot of you. In today's chapter of Loser called Champions, chapter nine, Zinkoff is going to play a soccer match. So one of the things we'll focus on for this chapter is comparing and contrasting Zinkoff, the character, to other kids. Um, remember last week, one of the things we looked at over here are our fiction story elements and characters are a big part of fiction stories, a huge element. And one of the things you'll have to do a lot of in fifth grade is compare and contrast characters within a text or across many texts. So I'm going to put that up there. Our word to watch today is slumped. And so listen carefully for that word. We'll try to figure out the meaning. And then the sentence starters that you will notice me using, which I will have you use for a Flipgrid quick two-minute assignment that you'll have to do when you're done with this. Um, you'll hear me saying things like, one trait he has is, followed by evidence, I know because. And remember, we when we give a character trait like lazy, sloppy, excited, sick, we always want to back it up with at least one piece of evidence from the text, something that the character did, said, or thought. So to get that started, we did learn something very important about Zinkoff in Chapter 8. I would say that one character trait that Zinkoff has is sick or sickly. And the reason that I can say that, I know because in chapter 8, the narrator did tell us that Zinkoff throws up every day, all of the time. We, he has a stomach condition. We don't know exactly what it's called or how long he's had it or if there's a cure for it. But we do know that it is a character trait that he has. He's sick, unhealthy, sickly. And we know because the narrator told us he throws up all the time. So let's try to see if you can listen in for some other character traits, either from this chapter or from chapters we've read before, and come up with at least one piece of evidence for that character trait. So let's dive right in. Champions. Soccer is Zinkoff's kind of game. Baseball has too much waiting and too many straight lines. Shooting a basketball demands precision. Football is fun only for the ball carrier. But soccer is free for all, as haphazard and slapdash as Zinkoff himself. He plays in the Pee Wee League in the autumn of his seventh year. So now he's seven years old. His team is the Titans. Every Saturday morning, he is the first one there, kicking pine cones around the field until the coaches show up. So maybe to get ready for our Flipgrid discussion that you'll have to do, um, what character trait comes to mind if you think of a kid who shows up first, even before the teacher, even before the coaches? Is there a character trait that comes to mind? Let's keep reading. Once the game begins, Zinkoff never stops running. He zigs and zags after the checkered ball like a fox after a field mouse, except he hardly ever catches up to it. Someone else always seems to reach it first. Zinkoff is forever swinging his foot at the ball a half second after it goes past him. He winds up kicking the shins, ankles, and rear ends of the other players. Twice he kicked the referee. Once, somehow, he kicked himself. His teammates rub their bruises and call him Wild Foot. So he's not doing this on purpose, but he's accidentally kicking himself and others, missing the ball. Maybe write it down somewhere. What is a character trait that comes to mind for a kid who is just not very good at sports or walking or sitting? Um, I have a couple that are in my brain. Somebody that trips over their own feet all the time. Hmm. To zinc off a net is a net. He doesn't much care which team the net belongs to. Several times during the season, he kicks the ball at the wrong goal. Fortunately, he always misses. 
The first game is against the Ramblers. When it's over, Zinkoff jumps up and down and pumps his fists as if as he has seen athletes do and yells, Yahoo! He does not notice that he is the only Titan cheering. What are you so happy for, says Robert, one of his teammates? We lost. This is news to Zinkoff. Throughout the game and even at the end, he has not thought about the score. Apparently, losing has made Robert very unhappy. It shows on his face. It shows in the way he's kicking at the turf. Zinkoff looks around. Other Titans are kicking turf or stomping their feet or pounding their thighs with their fists. Every Titan wears a sourpuss. So that's someone who's like frowning and kind of throwing a tantrum. So Zinkoff, I'm noticing even in this game, we can compare and contrast him to other kids. How is he acting when the team loses the game that is very different from the other kids? Think about it for a second. What are the other kids doing? What is he doing? Yeah, unlike the other kids, he's just enjoying himself no matter if they win or lose. He's not even paying attention to the score. He doesn't care. He just wants to run around and have fun. And he doesn't understand why these boys are so upset. Very different from the other kids on his team. And then the coach calls the Titans into a huddle and says, okay, on three, yeah, Ramblers. One, two, three. Zinkoff bellows, yay, Ramblers, and adds, you the man. Yay, Ramblers barely crawls from the lips of the other Titans. So other boys are just like, yay, Ramblers. That's the other team. Meanwhile, Zinkoff is like, yeah, you rock. Good job. What's a character trait that maybe comes to your mind after hearing that evidence? And then the coach is lining them up, and Ramblers are in the line, too. And the Titans and Ramblers are patting hands down the line like dominoes. Pat, 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 pat. Now, no sour faces on the Ramblers who keep saying, good game, good game, good game. And Zinkoff is the only Titan saying good game back. And then the Titans are heading for their parents on the sidelines. And in order to show their parents what serious soccer players they are, they kick the turf some more and tear off their knee pads and shirts and throw them to the ground and stomp on them. One Titan even falls to his knees and balls while pounding his head into the grass. Talk about a tantrum. So if I was tracking maybe like that player right there, I would say one trait that that boy has is a sore loser. And I know because he is crazy crying after he loses the game, pounding the ground, ripping off his um, pads, his knee pads, and everything. Meanwhile, if I'm comparing Zinkoff to those other boys, Zinkoff is, hmm, I want to find a really accurate word for him. I would say Zinkoff in this game is really carefree. And also Zinkoff, one trade he has is very friendly. And I know because he's telling those boys good game and he's shaking their hands, smiling, cheering them on. That's actually more than one piece of evidence. But you see how if it's a strong character trait, you can actually find a lot within even a page. Let's keep reading. Zinkoff wants to be a good Titan. He kicks at the turf too. His mother and father look on with mouths agape as he tears off his shirt and his shoes and finally his socks and stomps them all into the ground. He gets down on his knees and rips up grass and flings it into the air. He snatches the pacifier from baby Polly's mouth and hurls it onto the field. He pounds his fists into the ground and cries out, No, no, no. By now, other parents and players are watching. Zinkoff's mother says, just what do you think you're doing? Zinkoff looks up from his knees. I'm being mad because we lost? Baby, Polly is bawling. Well, you can start being madder because this little demonstration will cost you your allowance for a week. 
and you have five seconds to bring that pacifier back. So now I kind of have a little bit of better understanding of Zinkoff's motivation for actually acting the right way during the game when the game ended initially how he was like being nice and cheering other kids on it's because his parents actually raised him to do the right thing they do not deal with temper tantrums and he got punished right away as soon as he started acting out like those other kids did so there's a little motivation for why he is the way he is all right so now a little time has passed Zinkoff is determined to become a better loser. In the following weeks, he practices his losing in the backyard, but he never again gets a chance to show his stuff on Saturday for the Titans win all the rest of their games. No great thanks to Wildfoot. One time, amazingly, he finds himself alone with the ball and a clear field ahead of him. Propelled by an excitement of whistles and screams behind him, Wildfoot, boots the ball on and on, never realizing he has long since gone out of bounds. He crosses two other soccer fields and is finally stopped in the parking lot. On another occasion, he throws up on the ball, which in turn causes two other players to throw up. It is after this incident that several Titans ask the coach if Zinkoff can be traded to another team. They are soon glad it didn't happen. The last game of the season comes down to a playoff between the Titans and the Hornets. The Hornets have also lost only one game. The winner will be the champion. The game goes as usual for Wildfoot. He runs around a lot, he swings his foot a lot, but seldom connects with the ball. Sometimes he makes himself dizzy running in circles as he tries to keep up with the action swirling around him. Late in the second half, the score is still 0-0. Zero to zero. Zinkoff is standing in front of the Hornets' net, wondering where the ball is, when suddenly it hits him in the head. It bounces into the net for a goal, and Zinkoff is instantly mobbed by cheering teammates. The final score is Titans 1, Hornets 0. The Titans are the Pee Wee champions. The Titans go wild. They jump like kangaroos. Ooh, there's a good simile there. They jump like kangaroos. They fall onto their backs and churn their legs in the air. They ride their parents' shoulders and thrust up their fingers and crow, we're number one. Zinkoff goes wild too. He tries to stand on his head. He shouts into baby Polly's face, we're number one, and makes her blink. He climbs onto his father's shoulders and proclaims to all the wide world, we're number one. Maybe just this evidence right here of how Zinkoff acts after they win the championship, maybe a good character trait comes to mind that you can share soon. And then he looks down and sees the face of Andrew Orwell, his neighbor. Andrew is a hornet. His neighbor Andrew is on the other team. Zinkoff has never seen a sadder face in his life. It reminds him of a monkey's face. He begins to notice the other hornets in their black and yellow shirts. They are slumped on the grass. They are slumped over their parents' knees. Not one of them rides on a shoulder. Every one is monkey-faced and crying and slumpy. Oh, we have our word to watch. They are slumped over their parents' knees. Every one is monkey-faced and crying and slumping. It also says they are slumped on the grass. So how I want you to just picture to figure out what this word means, how would you maybe be sitting or standing if you are crying and you just lost a huge championship game? Think for a moment, right? What do you think slumping means? Are they standing up like straight and proud? Or are they maybe like that, right? So maybe their shoulders are kind of up, their head is down, their back is curved. A lot of you will sometimes slump in your chair if you're tired or having a bad day, or maybe you just lost a game in class. 
Then they give out the trophies. Every Titan gets one. Zinkoff has never won a trophy before. It's a golden soccer player on a black pedestal with a golden soccer ball at its foot. It glows as if it's been painted in sunlight. It is the most beautiful thing he has ever seen. Ooh, another simile there. It glows as if it's been painted in sunlight. So really painting a picture in our mind of how golden and shiny and beautiful it is. Zinkoff sees the other Titans kissing their trophies, so he kisses his too. As he does, he sees the Hornets slumping away to the parking lot. And suddenly he's running, he's yelling, Andrew, Andrew. Charisse and Andrew turn in the parking lot. Zinkoff runs, huffing up to them. Andrew, here. He holds out the trophy. The look in Andrew's eyes tell him he has done the right thing. You take it. <gasps> That's cool. So maybe a character trait for Zinkoff is coming to mind right now. For what he just did. I know because in the parking lot after that game for Andrew. Andrew reaches for it, but his mother catches his wrist. Donald, that is really nice of you, but you're the one who won it. Andrew will win a trophy of his own someday. Andrew's fingers are curled like claws. They can feel the golden trophy inches away. As his mother leads him to the car, he cries out, I want it. And I'm gonna show you the way he said it. Want is in italics. I want it. That afternoon, Zinkoff sits on his back step. The trophy is beside him, brighter than ever. Zinkoff is playing a game he invented called Bugs on a Stick. In the next backyard, Andrew sits cross-legged by a bed of purple pansies. He cradles his chin in his hands, and his face is still sad. Zinkoff calls, want to play my game? Andrew shakes his head. Want to go in the alley? Andrew shakes his head. Zinkoff asks Andrew many questions, but all Andrew does is shake his head and look monkey-faced. After a while, Zinkoff gets tired of his game. He looks at Andrew. He can think of nothing else to say. But now Zinkoff is sad too. Not just because Andrew is sad, but for another reason. The soccer season is over. That has been the best part of it, playing the games. He wishes he could make himself feel less sad. He picks up his trophy and goes inside. A minute later, he opens the back door and places the trophy on the step and goes back in. When he comes out later that day, the trophy is gone. Whoa-oh! I wonder if somebody took it. He just put it on the front step of his door. That was probably not the best place to put it, and now it's gone. I bet a couple of you are wondering and thinking about making predictions of who took it. I know who my suspect is. Anyway, what you're gonna do once this video ends is I have a link to a flip grid. It's really easy. You just click on the link and I will walk you through saying, um, the only thing you have to do is share with a video one character trait for Zinkoff. It can be for this chapter or any of the chapters we've read so far and one reason why you think that. So your video might only be 10 seconds long. You can all do it and I look forward to seeing what you come up with and so will your classmates. It'll be good to see everybody's faces again. Take care.